Welcome and good morning to yet another week. It's week number five in the CA tournament. My name is Tiran and I'm joined by my dear co-host Pluto. How are you doing, man? Pretty good. Yeah, we get to face Amazon again today. Yeah, it's gonna be a super interesting week. Uh, I'm pretty excited um, because, yeah, as you said, we gonna cast today the upper bracket or like the the top seeded round robin um, between. Facebook's A team, Facebook, Zuckerberg against one of the most dominating teams in the CEA over the past seasons, Alexa 12 Pole. And that, as you said, is a rematch from last, from two weeks ago, I think about, right? Is that two weeks ago that we are, that that was a rematch or? Oh, sorry. We... Was muted there. <laughs> so yeah, it's a rematch from, from two weeks ago. Uh, we were actually supposed to play last week again while they're doing the sort of up and down uh you know matches to see who moves up into the top bracket mm -hmm. so we actually it was optional so we decided not to play it but we would have faced each other three weeks in a row mm -hmm. so that actually is very interesting because week number five is kind of special because we're changing the tournament format slightly around today in the last first three weeks we there was a seeded round robin between the top four team of last season last week was actually an up and down match where the top uh, teams of the swiss bracket format went and fought out uh, against the lower part of the uh, seeded ground about who is gonna go into that top four round robin for week number five that we are in and the interesting part here is i think both seeded teams lost against the swiss bracket top teams so we have two new teams in these top fours um which I think, let me triple check here, should be on one hand side, Amazon Pain Forest as the second Amazon team got into the top four seated bracket. And then the United E-Commerce Directorate, which is, I think, some sort of combined team. Do you know who yeah, that I, is? I don't know they're new this year but um it's a co combination of teams that were too small by themselves to join so it's a <laughs> kind of a uh, merged merged team together i checked uh with whisper uh, one of the amazon guys and he gave me a little bit of an information about who that actually is apparently it is spotify uh, it's shopify and square which makes this name absolutely hilarious the united e-commerce uh, directorate um so they're they're also gonna be up there and they're gonna face of amazon pine forest but we have this absolutely amazing rematch between facebook zuckerberg and alexa 12 pole um so let's maybe briefly take a look the first game gonna be um as i'm pulling it up here the first game should be on everdream la and that is not just a rematch between two teams that have played against each other two weeks ago but now it's actually um a rematch between two people who have played uh, two weeks ago against each other that's sour spinach against zero what can you tell me about those two it's very interesting um that they're having a rematch here in a pvt now these two players are incredibly familiar with each other they played together on the in the collegiate league actually for a number of years they both went to university of toronto so they actually played together for a long time on the same team so they're actually rematching again zero took the last match that they played like two mm -hmm. weeks ago in that tvp and he also zeros their ace player as well he's one of their best players uh, on their team so it should be interesting to see how this goes we know zero has a, a small mmr advantage like a 300 to 400 mmr advantage being a um a grandmaster player and, and all that so zero is definitely favored here and he also took last week but sars finish probably going to try something tricky interesting yeah that's going to be super interesting there's some confusion at the moment by the way going on on the, who's creating the lobby and what's going on here um there are more than um more than one community casters in there there's a bit of confusion going on we're already in the lobby to get for this for this match super interested to see uh zero playing out zara spinach uh, Sour spinach had i think uh 
a bit of a weak play early this year i'm not sure how it's going to go for him these days like he is he used to be like one of the strongest players but then yeah he lost a few games this season right he's been a little rusty i think it's the uh coming back from kind of a long break yeah and um we're all a little bit like that but some people played a little bit more over the break than others so not sure um exactly who played how much but i know juno played just like a lot um because like i i know because i see him on all the time like in my uh blizzard client but uh sar spinach i think took a little bit of a break was a little rusty coming mm -hmm. in but he had some tough matchups too he he always seems to to play against one of their best players every week so <laughs> we'll see if he gets back in form here but yeah he's a very strong player and then zero like he was he was he the person who was in grandmaster at some point yeah he's a long time grandmaster i think yeah. he's a 12 time grandmaster he does not play much on his account right he must have other accounts that's uh to keep uh his um games hidden from people looking at his um profile here he uh he only played about uh recently not that many games actually um games played this season is only 10, 20 yeah 10, um, 10 or 20 yeah. yeah 10 or 20 he doesn't he doesn't play them all under his uh 1v1 account either he'll play some team games and stuff <laughs> like that or custom games okay so it looks like we're gonna be ready for that first game between the top seeded teams the only ones who survived the round robin round the first three weeks between Facebook, Sucker Zerk, and Alexa 12 Pool, two probably the favorites for winning this season. We're gonna jump into Everdream LE. It's one of these new maps, one of the little bit more confusing maps. So let's take a look here. So in the bottom left corner for Facebook, the team captain, as the orange protos, it is sour spinach. Top right corner, we talked about him before. One of the strongest players in the whole tournament as the red Terran, it's zero. And I have to say, talking about Terran, did you watch uh, the uh, super tournament of the GSL last, uh, yesterday actually was the final, or today in the morning, I guess. I haven't finished the finals, but I watched uh, all the protos players plus a few other players here and there. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't completely finished all of them. Uh, they, they happen at a strange time. I mean, because it's Korea. <laughs> yeah. so I, I, did, I was too. actually I up to like, next... I was up till 3 a.m. in the morning <laughs> and tried to watch the final, just fell asleep. So I had to catch up with the final in the morning. Yeah, see, I, I started watching the, I started watching yesterday's matches this morning. So I got through the uh, the PVZ at the beginning with Dark and Trap, but mm -hmm. I haven't watched past that. And I mention it because um, there's some really, really good games in there, and particularly from the Terran side. Oh my god, like the Maro games, like literally watch every Maro games you can you can get your hands on. Um, the guy's guy is just on fire in on the super tournament. Like he had his downs and his ups, uh, but this was certainly an up. So uh, Terran certainly after the patch, much, much stronger, uh, with way, way more versatility against uh, Protoss and particularly against Zerg. So some really good games. Um, anyway, going into this match, uh, nothing unusual, both early expand. Um, there's a little bit of a probe here on the right side from Sour Spinach. Gonna see what he's gonna do. Well, a lonely red SCV is hanging out in the enemy proto space. Yep, the Reaper is on the way. And our turn player here, Zero, going into a factory. And he left a little bit of a, a space for. Uh, a reactor there so let's see if he switches this factory onto that reactor and if he decides to go hellions or if he's going to go into a more standard kind of mind drop play the reaper getting one drone so for a little bit of harassment second drone gonna go down stalker gonna pop out and just pushing back that reaper nothing unusual so far nothing you know deciding just a bunker on the low ground here what do, you, what do you say, like, you as a Protoss player, like, what's a common, what do you see the most on the ladder map these days, um, particularly on Everdream here, in terms of, like, Terran play? 
There, most of them are still going mind drop, but mm -hmm. there's um, a number of people that go Hellions, and you can catch your opponent off guard here a little bit. Um, as we see more and more kind of marine production coming out, we'll see what Zero wants to do here because he's going up into that starport and he already has that tech lab. So there's a potential for Banshees here if he switches the... Uh, so he's going to build a, a Cyclone here. I don't think that he's committing to, to a mech style. I think he's just making one for defense probably and then switching that off. Um, but we'll see what he wants to do here. He hasn't made any mines yet. He hasn't made any, any Hellions yet. But those are the two main things Terrans like to do for harassment. Mm -hmm. The alternative, he can always just switch out that uh, starport with uh, the the barracks with the factory and then go for mine drops from here. So that's still an option for him yeah. as well. That Reaper so it finally died, but like with like what, five kills? Like quite living up to its name. Yeah, he, he has some pretty good control, uh, honestly. Um, the, the, the very interesting thing here is that actually Sar Spinach made two early gateways, which usually you don't do that. But now he's going to try to do a little bit of harassment with uh, a couple of stalkers here, which is kind of interesting. Um, this Viking is going to scalp that. I don't think he's going to get much done with the with the Cyclone out, and a tank is about to pop, I believe, right? Yeah. Oh, no, he canceled the tank, and he switched the... Uh, the he, he's getting a Raven out with that starport now. So, very strange to build a pylon here like there's no way that's gonna stay up um i don't know what you want to do here to be very honest like that was a very little bit of a weird attack for sure seems like just very solid like taking up from the terran side here nothing unusual really coming out of like our terran player and just like very solid play i'm a little bit confused of like what our finish is up to here um that viking is a little bit of a trouble it's gonna get probably gonna one get of the sentries that's pretty big, actually. Like losing one of the sentries pretty early. Yeah, that had a good bit of energy on it too. Yeah. He also got a few probe kills there. Forges pretty, a warp pretty good, uh, Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good Viking there. It's not too useful. Other than that, there's no you know Stargate or I don't know like you know War Prism play just yet. So get a little bit of a scout and go into a more macro game here. Star Spinach really needs to take his third base. It was late for his third base, I think. Yep. Very late first uh, third base, and at the same time, just not like a lot of like push potential for uh, Sour Spinach here. Looks like our Terran player is just gearing up for that typical like eight minutes like strong push of a Terran player. Um, lots of barracks being added, another command center coming out, more Madivex being produced. That factory not doing much anymore, so it looks like he's gonna go into that bio. I was adding more barracks. Upgrades on the way for the turn player as well. Uh, I'm one one about to. Yeah, not not quite. Like the the plus one uh, armor is like finishing soon, but then attack is like still a little bit behind. Yeah. Um, pretty solid play. There's no third base here for the turn players. Oh no, never mind. It's in the main. So he made it in the main, and he's actually going to take that bottom location. So Star Spinach made a pylon here in the other in the other third, um, which I think is going to get taken out by some of these marines. They but have not spotted it yet. Yeah. Oh yeah, they backed up. Uh, they were heading in that direction right there. Star Spinach has done a nice job just keeping this observer directly over his opponent's army, so he knows exactly when they're going to move out. But he hasn't actually seen the third base in the main of the Terran player, so he might be playing a little, a little too defensive here because he doesn't know that his his opponent's actually going to um, going to take a, an expansion. So he's looking for the third. He he's he's really seeing like where's that third at, and he doesn't see it. So. But now he sees the the transfer, so he, he can he can see it now. He's like, oh, yeah, let's go can, back. He can, uh, <laughs> uh, he can he can do the yeah. kind of detective work and saying, oh, well, if he's mining from that base, he's probably gonna take the uh, th the third eventually. And there he now he sees the third being taken, so he can play a little bit more. Gotta be careful here with his observer because uh, there is a raven out, and it's very easy to snap this observer, denying a lot of vision usually um, that the Protoss has um, at this time around. 
Uh, so far, Sarah's been doing a good job here, getting enough information while like not getting this observer killed. Um, interestingly, note this like very nice spread from Zero on the Marines. So, like, the Marine here on the bottom side of the map, on the middle side of the map, on the little top side of the map, just to spot like any army movement that can come in and out of towards him. So, quite interesting to see that. Big push now coming from Sarah Spinch, a little bit of pressure with the warped prism, um, a Don and two uh, mortals. But that's going to be spotted right He's away. Taking, yeah, so he was taking the path that wasn't in range of any Marines, but then he went down the ramp and there's a Marine yeah, there. Yeah. So now, now Zero definitely knows. And he has the Liberator route. I wonder if Sarsmish blinks right on top. There, there it is. Pretty nicely done, taking out one of those Liberators. It doesn't seem like he can focus fire the other one just yet. Oh no, it does go down. The tank on the high ground is just doing a lot of damage to all of those uh, Protoss units though. And then Great Disable on that War Prism. Sour Spinach forced to retreat here. It's going to lose another mortal. So that was certainly not a good attack here for him. Quite costly to go under the Liberator, in particular the Siege Tank Siege here, uh, on this low ground. Not a great engage. And I, I do think, if I have to guess here, uh, that trade definitely in the favor of our turn player, who is quite up in supply now and has a really strong position. Uh, can actually, if he wants to, just take a force. Uh, but just can't also go for a very strong push from here. Yeah, the Terran is in a commanding lead. There's no splash damage out yet for Sars Finish, which is a little bit of an issue. He's going in the mass gateway uh, unit style. Um, but against Terran, you really do need that, that splash as soon as possible as a Protoss player. Um, we do see, finally, a Colossus is joining, joining the fight, um, and that's going to be very valuable here. But with that Raven, you know, we got to watch out for disabling on the Colossus because I will take that out of the fight. So guide me through this. Why would you choose a Colossus here over um, Templar at this point? I'm what? not sure. I think a Templar might have actually been better um, just because you can use up that gas. If you're going right. mass gateway, um, what tends to happen is you just have lots of gas left over so you can kind of make a lot mm -hmm. of Templar. But he did choose to go Colossus here. I think he also made a Templar Archives. Mm -hmm. but he should really be chronoing out Storm mm -hmm. and uh, making a few Templar as well. So he kind of went for both both options, really. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I was wondering because like there are uh, Ravens out and they're just very strong disabling, but then at the same time, there are only ghosts on the way, so that EMP also very strong. Um, good fight here. I think that's a good engagement for Zara Spinach here on the left, on the bottom side here. Pushes back that army. Still a lot of energy on these medevacs, so. One thing Sarspinch did really nicely there, he actually, during the attack, got a couple ah. of adepts into the main base. Oh, there's a couple of there's a couple of mines here. Yeah. I don't think he has any detection. Oh, the close call. One of the mines was already like ready to guy like, puke on these guys. I'm like, uh oh. Burly escape, burly so pulled back. Needs to do. He needs to use these stalkers and blink away to expose the mines and that way he can kill them because he doesn't have any detection. Yeah, like a good micro trick, uh, super fun to train. You know, you can also do that with the Adept, which is very interesting. You have to time it just right. The Adept so is hard as a time. Uh, much harder. It's much harder because the blink you can control when it happens. But yeah. the ad Adept Shade, it's like a, pr it's like a timer. Um, one trick. Uh, to try and to do that is there's a little bar above the uh, adept that shows when it's going to shade, mm -hmm. when it's going to finish its shade. If you know exactly where on the HP bar that you have to trigger the mine, you can time it using that HP bar. And we've seen some some pros really do that, and people in Grandmaster definitely know how to do that. One of the interesting aspects here, looking at the upgrades, looking at the army count, on one hand side, I do think Zero has a much nicer army. It does not have a very strong, it's very like, it's obviously a pure bio army. So in that regard, a bit like hard to, um, you know, we get, we get to be careful with storms. But he does have a massive armor um, upgrade advantage here, with like 2-2 two, two already being done. We're only 1-2 here for... Um, Sour Spinach, and now a big engage with the high ground advantage for Zero. The Viking shredding through these Colossus. But the Zealots chasing down that army. The Medivac's still on a lot of good health here. Bit of a forward blink. The Vikings come and go and 
land in order to help you with this engagement. I do think that Zero has enough here, and Zara's finish needs to pull back with a great AMP landing on the High Templars. They are out of energy. There's very little left here for Zara's finish. He has to retreat in order to not get stomped here. These Vikings going to town on the Colossus. Colossus just like killing them so quickly with that high ground advantage. And now Zero taking that fourth base very confidently um, with very little ways to contest this for our Facebook Protoss player. Liberty Sieging again. More engagements coming out out of Sour Spinach against Zero. Yeah, he's going to need some good storms here. I don't think his Templar have quite enough energy just yet, but now he should have some. And good splits by Zero. Zero is completely dominating the supply right now, but he can still lose if there's some amazing storms. There's another really good storm, but the number of Protoss units is not looking good for Sour Spinach. Absolutely amazing storms here from Zara's finish, but just not good enough. There's way too much Terran here on the map, and they're just grinding through this Protoss army. The next Colossus is going down. Four stock is not going to hold this. I think that's going to be GG here any second for uh, Zero, taking a very convincing lead after what was a uh, not so great engagement at the Terran base from our Facebook Protoss player. And Zero taking the 1 0 lead here for Amazon Alexa 12 pole. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that Star Spinach didn't cheese or do some kind of timing attack. Like, he wanted to play a macro game there uh, because I thought that his best chance of winning against is kind of a grandmaster. Ace, the ace player from Alexa was to take it to a weirder game mm -hmm. where Zero didn't have his footing as, as much, but decided to play the macro style. He did pretty well for the first uh, first half of the game, yeah. but then some of those engagements really, Zero was really well positioned to uh, kind of come out ahead every single fight. I felt there were like two key moments in that game. The first key moment when Sour Spinach decided to attack under Siege Tank Fire with Liberator sieged up as well into the into the Terran third base and not succeeding coming out with a massive disadvantage in army supply, which puts him on a back foot and lets just a Terran player macro up, expand easily without any ability for the Protoss player to contest. And then the second big engagement with the high ground advantage of the Terran player and so many Vikings out to just fight these Colossus, which basically didn't do much damage at all. Um, and uh, great EMPs. So I think that was like two key moments that just gave that game to the uh, Alexa player. Yeah, the way that so the way that uh, Zero was spreading out his Marines, like to see where the Protoss army is coming from, that helped him set up a really good like you know, defense mm -hmm. and attack. Sarspinch needed a little bit of that same kind of thing, either put pylons out or observers or something. So you can see that the, the Terran army is coming from a certain path. And that way you can set up on the high ground before they get there. Because fighting up a ramp as the as the defense, it just gives the Terran opportunities to get his Vikings in a good position or to get an EMP off of a, you know, mm -hmm. clump of Templar coming up the ramp. So it, it sets up the Terran for good engagements when you don't know what angle they're kind of coming from absolutely and now we are gonna go being ready for that second game of today alexa 12 pools one of the strongest teams in the tournament leading 1-0 against facebook's a team facebook zuckerzerk and we are gonna go into that second game between juno and kevin and tell me a little bit about juno and tell me a little bit about kevin and maybe a little bit about the map nightshade early yeah kevin's a very strong player um, from the from the Alexa side, it's about 4.9 km MR or something in that in that range. I don't think he's played much this season, so his portrait might be a little deceiving. But Juno is one of the strongest players on the Facebook team, um, 4.8 k or above actually. Now he almost got into GM when GM opened um, this this season. Uh, looks like we're gonna have a a, a pause here, a, some incorrect hotkeys for Juno. Possibly we might have to remake the game, but this should be a very good matchup because last week, or I guess rather two weeks ago, Kevin lost against a Zerg player, 
frogs on our team who did a very interesting kind of uh, ling drop nidus play so you know let's see if juno pulls out a similar kind of tactic here absolutely in the top left corner with the 1-0 lead in orange as a protoss player for alexa 12 pool it is kevin and the bottom right corner one of facebook's strongest players the hopes and dreams of the team lying upon his shoulders in blue it is the blue zurich it is juno maybe it's a bit of an overstatement that the, the hopes and dreams land on him but whatever uh he certainly needs to win this game for facebook we'll see what kevin has up his sleeves nothing unusual so far it's a low ground gateway that probably looks like a normal expand and juno juno's not a player who really likes to go for these like standard standard game he pulling out the cheeses all the time we have seen him with hatch blocks at this at the natural and now we're seeing him with a 14 pull so he mined exactly enough gas for the link speed and then he pulled his drones off gas so that indicates to me that he's just going to make links he's not going up into bane links or roaches or any of that um it's so kevin if he was scouting that he should have seen the pull off of gas and he should be able to say okay He's gonna make links, he's probably gonna expand, and it's not like a super crazy all-in, it's like just a link-based all-in, or a link-based attack, really. And I really love what Kevin did here. He hid the probe, and now he's gonna go back in and just confirm, yes, that expansion is there, then he's gonna go into the main and see, is there a Roach Warren, is there anything, Bane links, or anything that I need to watch out for? Yeah, well absolutely played. great play from him. In the meantime, that Zealot being ready, so a little bit of a pressure here uh, from Juno on the Cybernetics core, but with the uh, Adept already in the queue. Actually, the Adept is coming up pretty late here, so he might be able to do some damage, but there's a second Zealot coming now, and you gotta respect that while he's blocking off with a Palin, so I think that's kind of like shut down here. There's very little uh, these uh, links can do. Yeah, that was very well played. I mean, one of the things that Juno likes to do when he goes for this kind of thing is force the second pylon in the uh, in the natural wall so that the tech has to be there. But Kevin actually still built his second pylon in the main, which means his tech is going to be in the main, and that's harder for the Zerg to scout. So very, very good play here by Kevin. Just like, you know, not getting not getting uh you know completely out of out of his element he's playing it exactly right exactly what he needs to do and he's sending two adepts across the map now link speed is done so the links can actually catch up to these adepts gotta be very careful here with these adepts i think that one adapt is gonna go down before the shade can finish maybe he's get ally it looks actually he's getting away unbelievable one drone are gonna go down and second drone I think maybe dead already. That adapt a lot of trouble with that link speed being done. These adapt not doing a lot of work actually. Really good defense yeah. from Juna here with the queen it's good and to the send link them across. speed. Even when they're not gonna do too much, it's good to send them across because Zergs, when they go for the early links, they sacrificed on the economy, so they want to build more drones after that. And if you just send the adepts, even if they don't get kills, it still forces the links out, which is really nice for the Protoss player. So the issue is he lost both adepts, which means now the links kind of have a little bit more free reign on the other side of the map. And now with the Stargus coming out, these links are not going to do too much. The interesting aspect is that shield battery. Does he expect like an all-in or something along those lines? Why He's does he put extra safe? As... Extra defensive. Yeah, he does not he know that. yet that there's a third base for the Zerg player. Oh, so you might think it's an all-in, but he might that think this is two base. Is yeah. And Juno, on the other hand, has a really good vision here. Cheats everything that Overlord on a suicide mission for the greater good of the swarm. It's gonna go down. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. 8 HP, living wow, the dream, hanging on to dear life. <laughs> I mean, you know, Juno's not too far ahead in workers yet. I mean, 
the Roach Warren just finished. <laughs> he's building Roaches now, so I'm not sure he's gonna drone up anymore, but he hasn't really taken a huge worker lead. He's trying to do more damage now. And that one stalker going back to his buddies like, oh, you know, let's just not talk about this, you know? <laughs> it's a bit of an embarrassment here with the Overlord. Uh, that Warper's in Lysa getting scouted. Some Roaches on the way. Let's see what you can do. The Roach is not turning around. That's quite interesting. Um, but lots of Zerkling. And the make that Queen is going to go down. Um, and I think there's a bunch of uh, drones going to go down as well. But there's a bunch of Roaches on the way to the other side of the map. That Queen is saying goodnight, goodbye. You are dead. Stalker's kind of pulled into the main base here to see what they can do. That queen gotta be very careful with that queen. Losing queens early on is really annoying. And with the prism, he can just pick him up. The stalker, so they are not right. taking any damage. He's done a great job with that uh, harassment. The issue is two immortals in the main. I don't know how much Juno is going to be able to get done here against these immortals. Um, immortals are very, very good at taking out roaches and ravagers. But two sentries gonna go down, that's quite a bit. Gotta pull back here because that hatchery is really low. And gotta be careful to not lose that hatchery, that would be big. If he does one more shot, he's actually gonna depower this. This is great. So he's doing a lot of damage here already. That was amazing. He depowered both gateways and the cyber core and the shield battery. Uh, not gonna use the cyber core for much, but if he takes out the cyber core right here, no more adept production, no more uh, stalker production, and that would be amazing. Most oh, importantly, most importantly, is he looking for that surface area for the links? Good surrounds on the immortals, and that's the worst case scenario for the Protoss player. These ravagers ravaging through the Protoss base so far. Two more immortals here. Did he pick them up? I think he picked them up, right? So really good yeah, he defense up here. Too. Wisdom. He was juggling the Immortals really well, and I kind of like how he used the uh, Warp Prism to power back up that gateway. And that's a lot of Protoss army here. Juno in a lot of trouble behind on drones, behind an army supply. Just has Ravagers against an Immortal based army. That's not what you want. Some good hits here on the enemy. Six more links on the way, or 12 more links on the way. But I don't think that might be enough for to defend this. This is a lot, lot of protos, a really strong push with three immortals. Still a sentry with a little bit of energy. And some zealots to, you know, soak up that damage. I'm very worried about, about Juno if he can hold on to this. Yeah, the, the saving grace here is there's no... Um zealot leg speed or charge upgrade really but the three immortals are going to be so powerful here i don't think he has really anything to counter those he has a lot of lings which is nice against this army with no charge yet but there's still a lot of zealots to counter that so going for a really good surround some that. good connections with the bales but like the immortal juggling is just real here another warp in very very well done here by Kevin. very strong play juno on the back foot probably gonna lose this game third hatch is gonna go down there's still so much protos left against very very little zerk i think Kevin just broke through that despite this like attempt here from juno with this around and these few links will not do enough and i think that is 2-0 for Alexa 12 pull in right GG from Juno being called it's very strong showing from the Alexa 12 pull player he played very defensive very uh you know scouting exactly what's going on and just responding with what he needed and then mm -hmm. eventually when he got farther and farther ahead able to you know get his army together and in, 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 and just push across the map with a with a strong attack three immortals the war prism Never got picked off with the war prism with the, with those ravagers. Like very very solid play. Felt to me a little bit that Juno uh, tried a lot of risky plays with that fortune pool, the double expand, and it just didn't pay off. He was never able um, to really make the the space to drone up after that 
14 pool not being very successful basically do no damage at all and then a little bit of over commitment where's this initial push and just such a strong juggling from the, uh kevin here with these immortals keeping them alive despite all the links really good show here So it looks like my match is next, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop off. I guess okay. Brian will be tag teaming in with me here. Let's see, is Brian around already? He is around. Hey Brian, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you guys? I'm doing fine. You followed the game so far? Yeah, I just watched the game with Juno. That was great. It's a great game. You're actually also playing later. Um, so for those people who don't know, Brian is our new co-caster here. He's playing on the Facebook A team as well. I think you're actually floating, right? Between uh, A and B team every now and then. Yeah, I'm, I'm the floater. I've probably played equal amounts between uh, both teams, mm -hmm. but they've, they've all been exciting games. Absolutely. So today, I think that next game is Mastaman against Pluto, um, which should be um, quite interesting. Uh, Mastaman actually not playing on his account at all. That's so interesting. How do you mean? Does he have multiple? Yeah, he does. Like, if you look at his profile, <laughs> it's like, uh, I might stay, he does play, but he actually does play. He played 61 games this season so far. Um, he is, it's going to be a PvP, uh, Masterman, one of the Grandmaster players of Alexa 12, but one of the strongest players on the team as well. Pluto is going to have his work cut out for him. He has to take a win here for Facebook to have a chance in this uh, upper group round robin here with um uh, alexa 12 pro already like uh, being two zero ahead and so <laughs> you might actually get to the point if pluto is losing here that fourth game will probably be still played but you will not under any pressure um so pluto has to win in order for facebook to still has a chance do you know anything about masterman have you have you played two weeks ago um as a floater when they played alexa 12 pro brian uh, yeah, I was in that game. I don't remember who I was playing against. It was a Protoss, uh, and I did win my match, but I actually don't recall who I played. Nice. And you have, like, you're playing a Terran today, right? And Terran is really strong these, these days. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but, you know, it, it's cool. I've only been playing, I played two Protosses so far, mm -hmm. uh, one Zerg, so, you know, gotta have the, the diversity in there to play the Terran. <laughs> Hopefully, well. I guess there won't be any pressure, but uh, yeah, hopefully we'll play it there and hopefully Pranav wins, wins this one so I can, uh, I guess, get us to an ace match. Well, hold on. Yeah, exactly. So we are gonna jump into that third game of today between the top teams of the CEA today between Facebook Zuckerberg and Alexa 12 pool. And in the bottom left corner for Facebook, last hope, the last dance, maybe hopefully more. Our dear co host and co caster in blue as a Protoss, it's Pluto. Top right corner for Facebook, uh, for Alexa 12 Pro for Amazon, one of their strongest player, a grandmaster Protoss player here in orange. It is a master man. Looks like we have some uh, proxiness going on from Pluto. Um, just kind of in general. I guess I'm not too surprised by this, just from the general fact. Um, at least in MMR terms, Pluto is uh, a lower MMR player. And usually it's in the benefit of the lower MMR player to kind of go for a more early aggressive, uh, kind of take advantage of not having to go to the late game with someone who maybe arguably has better mechanics and just kind of a better play um do you know anything about the two gate forge i'm not really familiar with uh, i'm people. not familiar all i know is damn cheesy but he's up against the two gate uh on the other side as well so we'll see how that's gonna pan out um another low ground 
pylon and the first cannon gonna start oh my god it is gonna be cannons are down pluto with the cheese let the pylon finish here uh, yeah, that was interesting. I thought he was gonna maybe just kind of leave it there for a little bit, um, but maybe it is to help out the cannon. I am from down. so hyped. This is so cheesy. I love it. Yeah, this is great. We have uh, already a zealot coming up, trying to do some damage on the gateway. That's the man with a with a stalker coming out, but. I'm not sure if he's gonna have enough. Hopefully the shield battery from Estimate can come up. We can kinda do a little support damage, but the probe is there from Pluto, ready to drop some more cannons. Yeah, I would love to see a low ground uh actually shield battery here. But he's missing that cybernetics core. More zealots coming in, taking out that high ground pylon. That would depower all of these buildings. It would be so huge. Can you get it? The pylon is gonna go down, the cybernetics down. Production for Mestaman down and Mestaman in a lot of trouble. More shield batteries going down. One zealot and a stock in a dream to defend this as more pylons and photo cannons, photon cannons are warped in here for Pluto. But those shield batteries doing a lot of work for that stock and the zealot. Yeah, it seems like Pluto's been trying to keep away Mestman's unit so he can get down the cannon. At the same time, it does seem like he's been kind of losing some zealots almost for free. Uh, they haven't been getting any kills, mostly just kind of trying to zone out the units. Uh, this is the multiple time that Pluto's been trying to get up this clutch, uh, clutch cannon, but it's probably... Oh, didn't get canceled. Uh, hopefully, for Pluto's sake, they can go down. Now, one of the shield batteries out of uh, energy finally, so there's a little bit of a window where you can do a lot of damage as the second, the third actually shield battery is finishing up. Um, that photon cannon is gonna go down. One more zealot. It doesn't look good for our dear uh, co caster. A lot of good defense. Turns out, shield battery, pretty damn good building to have. Yeah, Messaman is doing a great job at holding this off. Um, although he lost all the stuff at the top of the ramp, he's kind of rebuilt most of it. And he's holding it off with superior units. These Zealots are just having the hardest time against these uh, ranged stalkers with shield batteries. And the, the new photon cannons that are trying to get in a more forward advanced place just keep going down. But all the shield batteries still out of energies, so it's not too bad. I still think there's a window of opportunity here. But with every minute that is passing, it's looking grim. Cybernetics finally going down. So that is all she wrote for Stalker. Cybernetics is going to be rebuilt. Photons cannons are attacking now the shield batteries. But these three Stalkers and two more Stalkers on the way doing so much damage. They can just kite this forever. Another shield battery going down. Five Stalkers. There's a lot of Stalkers. Also, uh, one of the biggest um, attacking units or attacking uh, usages that Pluto's been using are the cannons. And his probe did, ju did just go down. The stalkers picked him off. So uh, either Pluto's going to have to transition maybe or bring another probe over, although that'll take a while. We also have Mestaman bringing in a Void Ray. And uh, unfortunately, all the cannons that could defend that are on the other side of the map. Yeah, I think if that is gonna go out, yeah, and that's GG for Pluto <laughs> with his cheesy strats. Do not, it's not able to break through this very, very strong shield battery soccer defense of Mestaman. And that is all she wrote. Facebook losing 3-0 against Alexa 12 pool in um, a very nice showing here from the uh, Alexa 12 pool team um, and pretty dominating victory against the Facebook team. That being said, I think we're still going to play that fourth game that you're going to play. So I assume that you're going to hop off here and go lock in that fourth game to maybe get a little bit of our honor back for the Facebook team um, in that fourth game. We'll see. Hopefully. I could just seal the fate even more uh, more solidly. But, yeah. you know, it's fun to play. Yeah. Well, good luck and joy. Do us proud. Okay, Slum does not want to play the fourth 
game apparently yeah that's okay uh maybe he just doesn't feel like playing maybe he uh has you know has build that he's been practicing and doesn't want to give out replays for him or you know it's whatever it's all good um it was great casting with you and Hopefully we can Lots of fun. Week. We're gonna wait your second tier until our dear co-host is gonna be back. So you can tell us a little bit how that game went from his side before we're gonna close out the cast. Pluto, how are you doing? Pluto. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, not not happy about the result, but I gave it a shot. I think that was one of my only chances at really beating him. Mm -hmm. uh, but. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was uh, that was tough. He knew exactly what he needed to do to defend. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, rough. Yeah. But that's why he's a grandmaster. Yeah, it looked very strong in the very beginning, but then with every shield battery finishing, just like really, really tough man for you. Yeah, I'm not sure if um, I could have done anything better there to beat that, or mm -hmm. maybe put the put the. Um, what is it? Cannons in a better position there. I think that the, when I made the first two on the low ground, one of them was actually not in range of anything on the high ground, and that was a mistake. Mm. So there's a few mistakes there. I probably could have played a little better, but I'm not sure I would have changed the result. Mm -hmm. Oh well, worth a try, man. So I think that's it for today for um, Facebook Zuckerberg Zuck against Alexa 12 pool. Alexa 12 pool probably number one at the moment, I think. Um, next week, we're gonna play either Amazon Paint Forest or the United e commerce Directorate, which, as we said before, is a combined team between Shopify and Square. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, thank you so much for today. Uh, and tune in next week. Hit that follow button if you haven't. Uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Pluto, for coming on and helping casting. And then see you, everybody, next week. Good night and good evening.